Hey guys, what's up? It's Rai right here. And today I have a video for you. I'm going to be going over some of the stuff we saw at E3, some of the games, my likes, my dislikes, what I'm looking forward to, what kind of caught my eye, as well as go over some of the CTE updates, uh, the community test environment updates to Battlefield 4 here recently. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, first I want to talk about couple of games that really uh, caught my eye here. Uh, Bloodborne uh, from Software created a Bloodborne. Those are the guys that did Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2 and the Demon Souls series. And as you guys know, if you follow my videos, I was a big Dark Souls fan when it came out on the 360 and I played a lot of that. It was really my last game. I played a lot on the 360. So I'm real interested to see if Bloodborne becomes like the uh, PlayStation 4 kind of newer console version of Dark Souls. And if it does, I'm definitely on board with that and probably going to have to pick up a PS4 at, some, PS4 at some point if that's the case. Now I saw uh, also No Man's Sky. Really cool looking game. Great concept. I thought if you can, if these guys um, at Hello Games is who's developing it can pull it off where they can get, you know, I can get out of a ship, I can roam around and, and do things in a first person type setting and then get into my spaceship, fly off into space, have a space battle, land on a different planet and do that, you know, across like a universe or a galaxy, that would be awesome. Totally great concept. If they can pull it off, I'm definitely on board. It's a must uh, kind of... That, to me, is a system seller. If that, if they pull that off, it's a system seller, is, is what that game is. Truly next-gen. I also liked uh, The Division. I thought it looked fantastic. I'm really excited about uh, that game. I like Ubisoft games. I'm a big Splinter Cell and Ghost Recon and... And, and fan of a lot of their games and a lot of those military type shooters and, and I'm really excited about what the division has to offer. It looked cool. It gave us some good, uh, what appeared to be good uh, gameplay and, you know, uh, kind of uh, open world co-op type cover based gameplay. I thought it just looked great. So I'm looking forward to that. As well as Rainbow Six Siege, another uh, big Ubisoft title. It's good to see Rainbow Six back, looking like it might be back to its old roots somewhat, where, you know, you've got to be more tactical, you can't run and gun. Uh, it, it's so easy in a lot of these games, and Battlefield, uh, one included, where you see guys just running around and just running from point to point, not be playing tactical, not using cover, not bounding from cover to cover, not, you know, peeking around corners and doing, uh, you know, playing wisely. And a lot of times these guys get rewarded by just getting off a lucky shot or two, even though maybe you started shooting them first, uh, they somehow get the kill on you. That wasn't like that in Rainbow Six. In Rainbow Six, if you were playing like that, you would have horrible rounds and, and quickly just want to go back to playing like a Call of Duty or something like that because you would not be able to hang with the more tactical players. Nice to see that Rainbow Six uh, Siege, at least the, the demo we saw, looked like it has a lot of those old school Rainbow Six elements uh, back into play. It also looked a lot of fun. It looked like you could shoot through walls if a guy's in, in you know, the part where they breach through the ceiling and jump down and shot the guys down on the floor. I thought that was totally cool. Blew me away. I said, okay, if, that, if I could do that, I'm getting the game, no, no doubt. Um, uh, some of the games I was kind of... Uh, well, so-so on Sunset Overdrive. I mean, it, granted, it's not really my type of game. I, I kind of, you know, admittedly play some of the bro shooter games and some of the sports games, and I'm kind of into some of those. I do like an occasional, you know, uh, fantasy-style RPG or, or something like that thrown in there. But for the most part, I do like the shooters. I do like the, you know, the military-style games. I do like uh, my sports games. I do like some of those. Um, but... You know, it, it's not to say Sunset Overdrive is not a good game. I think it looks great. I love the art style to it, and it looks funny. And one of my favorite games on the last gen consoles was Borderlands in the Borderlands series, in part because the writing and because the characters and because it was a fun and funny game. And I, I think it showed you can really do comedy in a game in a in a violent first person shooter well and make it fun and make it a great experience. And I thought that was just fantastic. And if they're kind of going for that with Sunset Overdrive. I, I think I might very well be interested in it, even though it doesn't look like it's my really type of, of game that I usually like to play. So I'm, I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach with that, but I do have hopes for it. Same with Destiny. Destiny, I kind of, you know, a lot of hype going around for Destiny. Uh, I'm not a guy that always believes in a lot of hype. And what I see is I just see it looks like Halo with a nice new, uh, you know, coat of paint. A lot of the AI is really what kind of got me watching some of these guys play in the uh, in the uh, the alpha or the beta or whatever it is they're playing, it, it looks like they're just playing and 
and the AI doesn't seem like real dangerous at any point. I don't get a sense that, oh, this AI looks killer. Now, again, I haven't tried it. I haven't gotten my own hands on it. I could be totally wrong on the on that account. But just from what I was seeing, it looked like they were getting shot with it with, by a bunch of needlers, and it just didn't look like I ever felt like the character or the player was really ever in danger at any point uh, in, in what I've seen of that game. Looks cool. I like the idea of it. I like the co-op. I like the grand scope of things. But again, I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach on it. Now, uh, some of the things that I was disappointed about, Crackdown announcement, well, I mean, it's nice that it was announced, but we saw no gameplay, zero gameplay at all. We saw a nice, real polished CG trailer, which doesn't really tell us much. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when we actually get to see some gameplay of Crackdown. And Star Wars Battlefront, I was hoping to see more than what we saw of them. We saw them playing with models is really what we saw with, with the, the DICE and the EA guys in that, that CG uh, trailer we got. We didn't really get, or that trailer we got to see, we didn't really get to see any updates to the game, any type of gameplay. We saw a guy riding around on a speeder bike. I don't know if that's from the game or not. I, you know, is it a demo? What is that? Is that some sort of testing they're doing? I don't know what that was. So it was disappointing because I'm a big Battlefront guy. I've been waiting to see a new Battlefront. You know, we didn't get one on the last gen consoles. So it would really be nice to see one, and I'm really looking forward to that. Now I want to talk about Battlefield Hardline. I was really excited to see Battlefield Hardline. I just thought it's cool that Battlefield's kind of uh, taken a little bit of a step away, at least with this kind of iteration. Almost like an offshoot is what I prefer to call it, but a step away from the hardcore military shooter it's always been. I think the Cops and Robbers gameplay can be really cool. Uh, the heist-type gameplay looks a lot of fun and just something different for Battlefield fans. I was really excited to see some of the gadgets, like the grappling hook, like the stun gun come into play, and it be really interesting to see uh, how that uh, all plays out. I'm hoping that, you know, fingers crossed, that it, it launches well, it launches a good, that a lot of the stuff they learned from Battlefield 4 in, in kind of rushing a release is not the way to go. They've lost a lot of fans, I know that way, and that they kind of do it better this time. And, and, and from here on out, we want to see these battle game, Battlefield games come out ready to go, you know, ready out the box. Not perfect, but playable. And I, th I think Battlefield 4 had a hard time being playable out of the box. And that's going to lead me into talking about the CTE issues. I think finally, with these recent CTE updates um, that they've instituted, the game plays now like it should have been from the beginning. It plays good, it plays fun, it plays fast, and, and feels like it's kind of out of beta. I'll give it the out of beta stamp of approval. Well, anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to hit like like and subscribe. Sorry I haven't been posting as many videos, uh, but I just moved recently. Been working a lot lately at my job, so I will try to keep the videos coming though, and I appreciate you guys sticking around. Until next time, this is Rai Rai. Take care.